Hey y'all, welcome back to Spirit of the Outdoors. What I thought I'd do today is do a both end cooking video. Uh, I've had a lot of questions. Some of them you've seen me clean them and cook them and catch them all in one long video. And then I had somebody had the nerve to say, yeah, but I didn't see him eating it. Okay, you know, that, you really can't be that ignorant. I don't, I don't really think, but you know, maybe somebody is. So what we're gonna do today is I have both in in there. Uh, you seen in the last video that I caught one, caught several fish. We're gonna go in here, fillet these out, show you how I prepare them, and then we're gonna cook them and eat them here right now. All right, so first off, when I caught these fish, I put them in a cooler of water. I'm finna show that to you. I kept them alive till I got home you cook, you clean right now. They do not be put on ice. They do not wait till tomorrow. They cannot be cleaned and put in the refrigerator. You go grunnel fishing or bow fin fishing when you're ready to eat fish. You come home, clean them, go to cooking. Let's go get these clean. All right, y'all, they in this cooler. I have had water. So my fish are in here alive. Now, they not as spunky as they was. Okay. Now, these fish are not like still jumping all around. i show you sort of how I go about some of these. All right, there's dispatching it right there. All right, you see he's gonna bleed out now. From this point, let me get my pan. So I got a dish pan, I have a fillet knife. Oh, this fillet knife is very old. I see people, if they think you gotta have a $150 fillet knife. This is $11 from Walmart. It does grunnel, uh, crappie. I have filleted brim. Anything I want to fillet, this knife will do it. But use whatever fillet knife you want. If you want an expensive fillet knife, by all means, go get you one. There's one right there. I, I just, I'm not a fan of that curved. And that one's cordless. It's a really good one. I like this. Uh, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna fillet this out. We're gonna get some paper towels. I've got several rolls. We're gonna pat it dry and we're gonna put it in this dish pan. That is it. So let's get it done. Sure. And if, if your fish dies on the way home and it's only been dead, you know, 30 minutes, an hour, you probably all right, okay? Uh, it's just the general rule of thumb is, is you wanna keep them alive as long as possible. And then I dispatch them before I fillet them. And uh, okay, so you see we cut into that gut and we got all of that nasty looking stuff. Everybody says, oh, you need to put that in water. Why is it nasty if you don't? Well, when you put that in water, you soak it into the meat, more or less. So if we take this right now, I can wipe most all of that off. I can sponge all of that blood, just about it out of there. And then what you do is you take your knife and you can scrape. Cause see, I'm gonna cut, and I know y'all can't see. Let me, let me reset the camera up where you can see a little more about what I'm doing. Go ahead and get both sides done on this thing. Okay. 
I think I got a little bit. No, I didn't too bad. All right, now I need a bucket over here. It's always a good idea if you can to uh, keep this mess washed up. Cause you don't want, if you put a little water on there, it is not gonna like just absolutely ruin it. And I have heard people say and put vinegar on that to firm it up. Y'all, I'm just not gonna, I, I just can't put vinegar on my meat I'm fixing to eat, all right? So right here, you've got them little real bones. Right here, we filleted most of them out. But you want to cut that off, okay? That's scraps. Now, I realize this may be one of them more gory videos. Right here on this part, you see there is some little bit of fin at the top. I'm going to trim that off. Because there is some little bitty fine bones in that. And then what I do is I start right up the middle right here. And you see I have separated this. Two pieces of meat. And then I cut like this into nuggets. Into my dish pan. And y'all, they won't be not one bone in none of this meat I'm fixing to eat. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now, right here, you seen this one got a little of that old junk on it. Cut that out. Oh, just don't worry about it. You got plenty of meat. And then what you can't cut out, it don't hurt to rinse that off uh, if you need to. It, it's not gonna really hurt anything. Uh, it's unsightly more than anything. But you can take this and see how that comes off now. That is the best by far way to get it off. See right here? And see, I've got all that yellow on my knife right there. I don't want that. I, I don't want to eat it. it. It ain't gonna like make you see it. And it ain't really gonna affect the flavor of it. It's just gonna, it will affect it a little bit. Anyway, but if you rinse that off, you need to be ready to cook. It can't be wet and stay wet very long. And, you know, have a time lapse. So let me tell you something else. Whenever you get your griddle and you cleaning him, both in, whatever you want to call it, mudfish, dogfish, uh, shoe pack, scaly cat, and you take that and you go to wipe that with a paper towel and it starts pasting up and mushy, he's no good. Right here is what one of my friends said they made a guitar pick out of. We're gonna save that one and we're gonna make us a guitar pick. Y'all see how that one did, did really, really good. Like, we didn't get no nastiness on our meat right there. We didn't cut in the gut. Now, a lot of people, and they ain't much in this one, a little bit, but now, if you want to know what to fish with, cut into a fish right there and see what he's been eating. I mean, well, I know what I caught these on, but... 
You know, I mean, you can find, are they eating bait fish? Are they eating crawfish? Are they, what are they, what are they feeding on? That helps you just to know a little bit. All right. Now, I, I'm wiping this off in the floor. We have a drain in our floor. All right, if you, if you white right here and that meat putties up right there, he's no good. Like I said, that is the best way to, for me to tell you, if you clean your fish and it does that, you don't want to cook him. You see how this is firm meat? This is not mushy. There's no mushiness to none of this, okay? You see right there, that is firm meat. Nothing is mushy, nothing is hurt. You say, why do you keep saying the same thing over and over? Because somebody's still going to ask the question. I, I mean, it never fails. A lot of people think you film in these videos to try to trick them into something. I, you know, I could care less if you eat a grill or not. I just want you, if you decide you are going to eat it, that you know how to make it fit to eat. Because if it ain't good... You ain't going to like it. And if it's mushy, you ain't going to like it. <laughs> it's not as much about how you cook it. There's several different ways to cook this. See, I'm splitting them right down the middle. And then look, just cut it up nugget. I have took that whole filet and baked it. Uh, I have laid it on the black stone and cooked it. I have left it, I have filleted it off the fish, left it in the scales, and cooked it over a fire in the swamp. And we may do that this fall when it is uh, a little cooler and we can get down there and, and hang out. Y'all, the mosquitoes and stuff so bad and it's so hot, it, it's already like muggy, muggy hot. I'm going to try to cut this one right-handed so you can see how I was doing it. I get over here about middle ways and I hold that and... And then I just bring this knife right down the center of that and make sure it's cut in two and then cut across it. Y'all, you just, you got boneless nuggets. And then we're going to take this to the house, yellow cornmeal, and deep fry it. All right, that's it. Y'all see our pile of nuggets? All right, now I'm going to wash all my mess up, and then we'll go to the house and cook. Get you something like this because you need to kill all that bacteria on that board. Any you cut and board, cut and surfaces.
Somebody's gonna say, why'd you film cleaning all that up? Cause I wanted the rest of you men to know that there ain't nothing wrong with cleaning up after yourself. <laughs> all right, it's time to build. It's time to build Lake Wesson. And then we will release these grunts in Lake Wesson. I had some folks ask me about releasing them fish in Lake Wesson. They didn't know where Lake Wesson is. That's Lake Wesson. All right, y'all, I got it on and getting hot. And uh, we'll put that on there. And we looking for 275 on that. I'm gonna lay my Dipper right okay, on. this is one of them shakers. Now, I have a little bit of cornmeal in there where I had saved it from the last time. but And it don't take a whole lot, but just yellow cornmeal. I'm going to add just a little bit to it. And then in that, we got Brother Tony. I don't know if y'all listen to Brother... Y'all like Brother Tony or not, but... We, we, since it's just me and Ross too, we're gonna go heavy with Tony. If Brody's here, I don't go so heavy with Brother Tony. And then this is salt. I do not salt my fish after it's fried. This is, this is the salt it'll receive right here, okay? And I don't, you, it depends on your cholesterol or how much you put. All right, I need to. Okay, and then from there, well, let me do this. I mix this up just a little. That way it ain't, you know, all on one piece of fish. Ah, there. And then you get your fish, and this, I mean, we, we straight right off in there. Put that on there. And y'all see that mess I made? Some of you missed that, didn't you? Get that cleaned up. Now I got a greedy floor I got a mop. So this is what we're gonna put our fish in when it's cooked. Y'all, what we do, I just take a old piece of newspaper to help soak that grease up. Lay it right down in the bottom of it there. Hey. has made it y'all to 275 and I, I need to move my red thing over where I know where I want this right thing. This is a new one. 
Look, I just dropped that right off in there. Well, that one piece doesn't hit the ground. I'm trying to put too much at a time. Well, ooh, don't let that hot grease splat out on them bare toes. I'm gonna cook about half of it at a time. I'm not gonna try to pile every bit of it in there. So we'll sit here and listen to the humming of lawnmowers this Saturday afternoon and uh, snack on the first batch while the second batch cook. Come on. So, and I'm going to uh, reshape that good. So now what I'm watching for, I'm simply gonna watch for that to start uh, floating, pretty much. You'll notice there'll be less bubbles, the bubbles will slack off and, and when it starts getting done, because all them bubbles are is moisture coming out of that meat. It'll start floating and uh, I see a few of them little bitty thin pieces are floating already. But you wanna watch your temperature as long as it's staying at about 170, or. 275 my bad that's what you're wanting to cook at if it's still creeping up turn your fire down a little bit i like cooking in this old cast iron i don't know why uh, but now those big basket fryers like we've got over there at that skinning rack we cook over there a lot when we're cooking at that cabin but i come home where i could get me a fresh bottle of water out of the refrigerator and and uh get in the house i'm finna get under the air conditioner for a little while prop my feet up now if y'all watch my fishing video y'all know roscoe didn't make it with me but now he he's he's done he done got up his dinner time and he's up moving around he, he's a little bit perturbed that i when i got back i think he was frustrated with me a little bit there it was a mite hot for him down there in that swamp anyway. He gonna go over there and get under that table and lay down on that cool. Y'all, it is hot. I'm telling you, it's hot. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and pull this thing up out of my way, lay it over here on my griddle. Ow! That way I ain't gonna put in the world and bring that thing up a hole in the tire like I got my foot. I find little army men and such as this laying everywhere. I don't know what that other sharp thing was. But anyway. Y'all see this is floating. I'm gonna let it brown just a little bit. I'm kind of looking for the color that I want. I have to take these shades off under this dark. In the, when I'm in the shade, you have to take your shades off when you're in the shade. That makes sense if you don't think about it. Oh, uh, I'm letting it brown to get sort of to the color I'm looking for. Like you would do any fish that you're cooking, do the same way. Okay, that make it easy for you. Now, if you ain't got a bowl like this to put yours in, uh, you know, I just thought about something. G give, give me just a sec. I just thought about something. Hold up, pimp. Now he's ready. Y'all ever seen a plate like this? Now, it ain't perfected. I got some more work I'm going to do to it. Ah. So I put my... Hey, now we're cooking with Crisco. Ah. Cooking in Lake Wilson. I know. Somebody thought it. Somebody thought it. I... The only bad thing about this is it don't have a high sides because of the way I dip this and flop it and pile it and tumble it. I 
I strain that grease off pretty good for my, or try to. Keep it from there dripping all over everywhere. One piece of ain't won't come out. All right, there y'all go. I let that, I let that cool a second before I go to sample sample. You know, y'all know I read the sample sample. Got them old bear. You, you'll curl them toes back up under you when you're doing this. You don't be leaving them just stuck all out in front of you. Somebody said, Why don't you put some shoes on? I said, Because I don't want to. Y'all look good. Doggone it. Roscoe! That one fell off on the ground. Where's he at? Here you go. Him. Roscoe, him. Alright. Y'all look at that. Hey. Now, I'm sure there'll be somebody say, Oh, you cut up something else and throw it in there. You didn't really eat that. Yeah. I went to all that trouble just to trick you. <laughs> Y'all, the whole world ain't out to get you. They ain't out to just try to fool you. Hey, some of them it are, but... Ooh, hot. Boy, that's the best grunnel I've eaten all day. It's a mite warm, though, I'll tell you that. I'm trying to make it where I can... This is cooling, be spread out, be cooling out here. And I'll pour all that that I'm just now cooking right there in the middle. Ah. See how I'm smart like that. Y'all didn't know I was that smart, did you? Mm. All right. We can't be eating no more before we say grace. Y'all, I don't know what the mercury's on, but it's gotta be pushed way up to glass. I get through with this, I'm gonna be ready for a cold shower. All right, y'all, this is about ready to get. I'm gonna go ahead and reach over here and cut this bottle off. That way, while I got a plate full of hot, I ain't got food with it. There it go. fire's out. Good, now. See that old hot be right in the middle now. Just cause I talk slow don't mean I'm stupid. <laughs> I got that from that sweet home Alabama movie.
All right, y'all. We are gonna go in there and eat under the air conditioner. Come on with me. I'm tired. Y'all gonna have to forgive that let me us behind me. I've been bacheloring for two or three days. But we finna eat good. We ain't went without as far as eating now. We, we might have been here by ourselves, but we've eaten good. Lord, we thank you for the woods and the creek. We thank you for the food we eat. We thank you for the fish that swim. We thank you for all of them. We thank you for the plants that grow. We thank you for the white-tailed doe. We thank you, Lord, for everything. God bless it in Jesus' name. Amen. Ah, oh, get me a little bit of ketchup. No, I don't need the ketchup. I just like it, and I'm finna show you why. Ah, oh, and I don't even know what kind of ketchup that is. I mean. And this is my homemade, this is not Texas Pete's hot sauce. His hot sauce does not look like mine does. All right, and I got some water left. I don't know why I have that blocks to load me. Oh man, so take your fish and I'm gonna mix that up good. Roscoe is laid down right under my feet over here. He is watching furiously. Hmm. I didn't, I didn't make nothing else to go with this. I could have probably made some coleslaw and stuff. I don't really make all that stuff. My wife makes it. However, I probably can. The reason I didn't is last night I cooked some more deer meat and vegetables and potatoes and stuff. And it's all in the oven and there ain't no need me keep cooking no pile of food. It's just me here, so. I'm gonna get me a couple of pieces of light bread. We usually call it loaf bread, but now the old timers around him, they'd call it light bread. I guess cause it wasn't cornbread. So I'm real bad thirsty. So I'm gonna knock that out before I eat all these salty fish. Mm. It don't need all that ketchup. I can tell you that, but I like it. Mm. Well, for that old boy that said, but I didn't see him actually eat it. I don't know what he did. He cooked something and not eat it. Anyway. You know... I don't really do a lot of trying to catch possums because I don't like possums. I don't go to a lot of effort to catch raccoons because I don't eat raccoons. I catch grunt because I like to eat them. <laughs> Same way with deer. I deer hunt strictly because I like to eat deer. Now them bass is fun to catch and they do it early in the spring and they all right now. But they ain't near about good as these grown. I'm not crazy about bream. A lot of people around here, they love bream. This is what I prefer to eat. If I'm going to cook fish, it's this or crappie fillets. I do like catfish. Well, y'all, I am going to sit here. Roscoe, you want to know about him? Get you a bite. Lucky. Lucky, you want a bite, too? Well, sir, she lost it. She's blind as a bat. She found it. I ain't going to make y'all watch me eat the whole thing. 
but I am going to eat quite a bit of it, so I might be here a little bit. I ain't had no breakfast in this. 1.30. So anyway, thank y'all for watching Spirit of Outdoors. Remember, the best way to do things is the way you like to do it. We'll see you next time.